Hi, thank you for choosing SciladB, the most closely fast and scalable database. Here are some guidelines for you to select the appropriate infrastructure and topology for your workload. A SciladB cluster is a collection of nodes, visualized as a ring. The ring of a SciladB cluster is known as the token ring. Each node owns a portion of it in order to balance the data across the cluster. For example, in the diagram presented, the token ring is divided in, into three ranges, 1 to 400, 401 to 800, 801 to 0. Each of these ranges are called token ranges and represent a fraction of the entire token ring. In reality, SciladB further extends the previous concept with the notion of V nodes or virtual nodes, which break up the available range of tokens into smaller ranges. In the picture, all red circles represent V nodes for a single node. Similarly, all yellow circles represent the V node for a different node, and so on. By default, SciladB assigns a total of 256 token ranges per node in the token ring. As a result, the more nodes we have, the more V nodes we will have in the token ring, and the data and workload will be balanced to all cluster members. This is how SciladB achieves unlimited scalability. SciladB achieves high availability via a setting known as the replication factor. The replication factor determines how many times the data should be replicated to other nodes, in addition to the node which owns the token for a particular piece of data, as we have seen. In the diagram, we can see the client sending a write operation to a cluster composed of five nodes. As the replication factor is set to three, the data will be replicated to three different nodes in the cluster. A replication factor of three is what we recommend for production purposes. To understand why a replication factor of three is recommended, let's go through a simple exercise. As a node in the cluster fails, you will still have a majority of the cluster up and running. Thus, it's still allowing the application to read and write with a consistent level of quantum and guaranteeing consistent reads and writes. At this point, you should probably have realized that there is something going on with the number three. In case you are wondering, yes, a solidity cluster of three nodes is the minimum we recommend, as it ensures data consistency as well as high availability. One fundamental aspect of SciladB that you should be aware of is its shared per code architecture. Remember the V node, the colored dots per node that we saw earlier? Well, those dots were essentially how SciladB automatically shards your data. However, SciladB takes sharding one step further. The data is not only sharded by nodes, as most regular databases do, but also by CPU cores. This means that every V node is broken down in shards, which are, in fact, your CPU cores. Speaking of CPU cores, we estimate that a single physical core is able to deliver 12,500 operations per second, considering a payload of one kilobyte. Of course, this number will vary upon a variety of factors, such as, for example, your payload size. A general guidance when creating your cluster is to ensure a well-balanced configuration. Let's take a look at each of the main com infrastructure components for your cluster. Networking, CPUs, RAM, and storage. A fast and low latency network link is required both from an application's perspective as well as for cluster internal communication activities such as data replication. 
we recommend a network of 10 gigabits or more, which should be commonly available nowadays. ScylaDB shared per code architecture allows for linear scalability of your nodes. Although there are no hard requirements on the number of cores for your cluster, remember to consider the expected number of operations per second for your application and to factor in uh, for growth. Memory plays a crucial role in your cluster performance. ScyllaDB implements its own cache subsystem to cache both your writes and reads. The more memory you have, the larger your cache is going to be, and the fewer round trips to this will guarantee lower latencies. As a low latency database, we highly recommend SSGs and local disks. Two aspects are important when selecting the ideal amount of storage. First, ensure that you maintain a reasonable ratio of memory to storage. A ratio of 1 to 30 is a good starting point, but we definitely do not recommend going past a 1 to 100 ratio. For example, don't try to store 1 terabyte of data on top of a server running uh, 1 gigabyte of memory as that would be a ratio of 1 to 1,000. Second, remember to leave free storage space for internal database operations, such as compaction, backups, repairs, and for regular application growth. Here's a quick formula in case you are in doubt on how much storage you need per node. It goes like this. We take the replication factor, and divide it by the number of nodes. Then we multiply the result by our data set size. The result will approximately tell us how much data will be owned per node without uh, considering compression. For example, if we consider our recommended replication factor of three and a cluster of six nodes, and an unreplicated data set size of 9 terabytes, then every node part of our cluster is going to own approximately 4.5 terabytes. Another formula which gives the same results goes like this. We multiply the data set size by the replication factor and divide it by the number of nodes. The result of this formula is going to be the same as the previous one. So we have a data set size of 9 terabytes, replication factor of 3, divided by 6 nodes, which is going to give us approximately, approximately 4.5 terabytes um, per node. As a result of these formulas, if we factor in growth and in internal database operations, we could start with nodes with around 8 or 9 terabytes of storage each. Taking the memory to storage ratio into consideration, dividing the resulting 4.5 terabytes by 100 would result in 45 gigabytes of RAM, in such a way that 64 gigabytes of RAM should be more than enough as a starting point. Here's a summary of everything that we have seen. At a minimum, a ScyllaDB cluster should contain three nodes. A replication factor of three provides great balance between high availability and consistency. A single physical core can approximately deliver 12,500 operations per second, considering a payload size of one kilobyte. Remember to keep a well-balanced configuration. Be mindful of your memory to storage ratios. Remember that more memory essentially means a larger cache and fewer round trips to disk. When selecting storage, prefer locally attached low latency ones. Use the provided formulas to estimate how much data is expected to be utilized per node. After, remember to account for growth and save room for internal database operations. As a rule of thumb, targeting approximately 50% utilization 
should be a good starting point if you are unsure. We hope these instructions have been helpful to you, and in case you have any questions, please contact us. Thank you.